What's up, everybody? Matt Hosbar, the prospecting geologist here, um, coming to you today with a uh, probably more of a rant video, but uh, it should be an interesting one. We are mainly going to discuss is like modern like lead, so like lead fishing weights, lead shot, lead bullets, a good indicator for gold. Um, so let's dig into it. Uh, so first I'll start with a general story from, uh, I think right around Memorial Day weekend this year. So my buddy, Nick, um, hang on here, let's pause. So my buddy Nick and my buddy Willie were dredging side by side, uh, the beginning of this year, right around Memorial Day weekend after I left. And Willie, at the end of the day, I think they cleared about the same amount of bedrock, but Willie, at the end of the day, found like 90 pieces of lead shot. And they're 90 pieces of lead shot. And Nick found like maybe five. And you got to realize here, they're dredging side by side in a creek channel that's maybe 10 foot wide. Um, and traditional wisdom, what a lot of people say is that, well, Willie must be on the gold line where the, or the heavy line where the heavies are and everything. Because he got 89 pieces of lead and Nick got five. Well, guess what? Guess who had the most gold at the end of that day? Nick had the most gold at about a gram with only five pieces of lead. And Willie had a bit under a gram, I think 13 grains, 15.4 grains in a gram. He had about 13 grains worth of gold and 89 pieces of lead. Um, which generally kind of tends to show you that just because you're finding lead in a stream or river, especially in the southeast Piedmont area, which is usually my main focus, and that's mainly what I'm talking about when I'm doing this stuff, um, that just because you're finding lead and other modern heavies doesn't mean you're on the gold line or where the gold is going to be in that creek. And that's my general stance on this. And my general um, experience has been that lead, modern lead, or even lead from 100 years ago and other heavies from 100 years ago to present have little to no bearing on the gold you find. Um with some of my best days dredging, I probably found no lead. And some of my worst days dredging, I found pounds of it. Uh, so a lot of this goes to kind of, there's there's reasons for this. We're going to get into that. But basically, your heavies that are man-made, in most cases in the southeast Piedmont area, are not good indicators for where you are going to find gold. Um, so let's dig into that a little bit. And actually, here's a uh, here's a picture of all the lead Willie found. I don't. He might have found two little pickers, but I think that's from actually his second trip out, out after that. Here's all the lead he found in that spot with like 13 grains, so a bit under a gram. Um. And then here's Nick's one gram of gold from that spot. So the the great lead didn't lead to the great gold, even though it was close. I'll give it that. It was close. But it's weird that there was such a 89 pieces of lead on one side and five on the other, yet the gold was better on the side with less lead. Um, but the main the main reason for this is that where the lead is and where the gold is, at least in the southeast, are not in the same layers. Every time I generally find lots of lead, it is in the surface material of the stream. It's in the loose stuff on top of hard pack. And where I find the good gold is under that hard pack. Not, not up there. So they're riding in different layers because that gold has been in that stream bottom for potentially tens of thousands of years. And that lead, who knows? I mean, less than 100 years in most cases. 
So that's part of the reason why it is not a good indicator in the southeast. But there's even reasons why it's not a great indicator in almost anywhere in the country. Um, so let's take, this is the James River. I'm just using an example here. So let's pull a good section of it. I don't know. So let's say, the, the, this is just, just going to be an example of a river. So let's say we have a vein, a gold vein that cuts across said river. Bam, like that. Um, so that's our gold vein cutting across this river. Now it is going to produce as the river, the river's flowing to the northeast here. It's a bit of an odd section of river, but the river's flowing to the northeast. If the gold is equal across all sections of this river, across all sections of the vein here, so not saying it doesn't have like it doesn't have like any ore shoots or other rich spots in it. Um, then the gold is going to generally, if you look at how it is accumulating, how the material is trending along here, which, I mean, you could kind of call this a very, I don't know, very minor inside bend-ish. Um, generally then, so you're going to have gold coming off this, and it's kind of actually going to form something like that, where it looks like it's going to get pushed from the one side and it's probably going to generally in many cases elsewhere in the country form kind of a it's going to ride this inside area where you can tell the material is coming out but it is going to kind of it's going to have to pinch down from that main vein source so, obviously, if lead were to randomly land here from a shotgun shell or something else, then it could be scattered about in there. And it would possibly follow this same trend. But that is if the lead is literally landing where the vein source is. So the only time, and this is where it you'll never know, the only time the lead could possibly be an indicator for gold is if it actually landed in the river right where the source is and the river is then going to accumulate it and push it the same way that the gold did. But once you get away from that and you say your lead lands over here, then it's going to follow a different path down the river and it may eventually intercept and line up with it but in most cases, that lead, where it fell, is going to stay there for a very long time. And as it does flood and move slowly, very slowly downriver, it's just going to get strung out kind of right in here. It's not going to indicate where the gold is in the river. The other main thing here is, too, is that, that this, so that's with shotgun shells and lead. With fishing weights and lead, they tend to, the fishing weights tend to be where everybody likes to fish. So, and they're very heavy. They're ounce weights and stuff, or, I mean, you do get the lead uh, split shots and stuff, but some of the bigger weights are big ounce chunks of lead. And if this is the popular fishing hole over here, to tell you the truth, that lead's not going to move out of there. Not unless there's catastrophic flooding. Um which then might push it, and it's still not going to move very far during that, so it would take many, many cycles to get it to potentially ever line up with that vein, with that, with the placer, uh, placer deposit. But from what I've generally found in the southeast is those popular swimming-slash-fishing holes, that stuff that's fallen in the bottom of them, even 100 years ago, is still in the bottom of that fishing hole. And my one buddy, Ronnie, can speak to that, too, because he's dredged a number of these fishing weight holes, these fishing and swimming holes, and he's finding coins from 100 years ago in them, as well as uh, Civil War three ringers and other crazy stuff, meaning it hasn't moved out of that swimming hole in over 100 years of it being in the river. Um, and there's little chance that that swimming hole lines up with a main gold deposit. 
Uh, so that's one of the main things is that it's just never the go the gold and the lead one riding in different layers two not ever starting in the same location is not going to lead to it being a good indicator for the line of heavies on the river and this is especially true in the southeast where the vast majority of the gold has never traveled more than a mile to a mile and a half from its original vein source so it's already barely moved in 15,000 years or more of being exposed. And in the creek, it's moved a mile and a half at most um, for mineable gold. So it's just the, the lead is not in the same layer. And I've also found this to be true with mercury. The mercury is ride from the mercury from the old mining operations is riding up in the loose stuff in the bottom of the river. It's still, it hasn't penetrated the hard pack, whereas the gold is under that hard pack. So until you, until you get it into your sluice box and you get it out of there and you start concentrating it down, that's when my gold gets contaminated with mercury. Before that, I, it's all clean because the gold was riding under the hard pack and the mercury's riding on top. And this is for Southeast because also the Southeast of the United States has no naturally occurring uh, cinnabar deposits, which is mercury ore. Whereas out west, yes, okay, there are naturally occurring cinnabar deposits, which produce mercury, which then could contaminate your gold. Um, so these are just some of my thoughts on a rant, kind of on using lead as a uh, indicator. Lead and other modern heavies as an indicator for you being on the gold line in a river. I've generally in the Southeast never found it to be true. My best days of almost an ounce in two days in the Southeast, I don't think I found any gold, any, <laughs> any lead. Um, found an ounce of gold in two days, but did not find any lead with it. And then there's been other times where I've dredged popular fishing holes and I've found a couple fly poops and a pound of lead. So, in my experience, I, I put no credence in lead or modern modern uh, heavies as an indicator for gold in creeks and rivers. Uh, one, mainly because they end up randomly in random places in the river, whereas the gold is coming from somewhere, and they, it just doesn't correspond with each other. Uh, so that's going to be it for today's video. This is just a quick rant. Uh, Stay tuned here coming up. We definitely have some more good dredging videos showing up here soon, as well as we'll be doing another big river trip in exploration for some new sources. So stick around. If you like this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you out on the river.